Mantle cell lymphoma comprises approximately 7% of adult patients with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in, in the United States, with an incidence of around seven cases per million um, persons per year. Incidence increases with age, and most patients are male and Caucasians. Median age at diagnosis is 68 uh, years. Uh, to summarize, the, the most frequent clinical presentation would be an, an elderly Caucasian male. The diagnosis is based on pathologic evaluation of tissue, either bone marrow biopsy and or a lymph node biopsy. Particularly, an excisional lymph node biopsy is always preferred when it comes to lymphomas in general. Mantle cell lymphoma is associated with uh, a translocation of chromosome 11 and 14, like in this case, that dysregulates the cyclin B1 gene. Acquisition of additional genetic abnormalities, such as translocations involving MEEK or uh, TP53 abnormalities, can lead to progression to more aggressive forms of mantle cell lymphoma with blastoid or uh, pleomorphic uh, morphologies. The National Comprehensive Cancer Network guidelines or NCCN guidelines divide options into less aggressive and aggressive therapies. Uh, the latter with the intention to consolidate with high dose chemotherapy followed by autologous stem cell transplantation, usually followed by maintenance rituximab. There are many pathways that uh, can get you there and certainly it's good to have options. You will have uh, hyper-CVAT, uh, you will have RCHOP alternating with RDHAP, uh, among other options to put the patient in uh, complete remission for the first time. And, and that is usually when we provide uh, the autologous stem cell uh, transplantation maneuver. Now, the maintenance rituximab data after autologous stem cell transplant comes from a publication in New England Journal of Medicine in 2017, showing progression-free survival at four years of 79% in the rituximab group versus 61% in the control group. Uh, furthermore, uh, rituximab uh, maintenance provided a statistically significant overall survival advantage, hence should be considered a standard of care post uh, autologous stem cell transplant. Uh, again, how do you get to autologous stem cell transplant? Uh, these aggressive options mentioned uh, in NCCN guidelines include uh, hyper-CVAT, RCHOP, alternating with RDHAP, and the Nordic uh, regimen. Uh, the disclaimer is that this is a rare disease, hence there is no consensus when it comes to frontline therapy and guidance uh, may be based on personal or institutional preferences. Uh, needless to say, we always encourage participations, uh, participation in clinical trials and they are indeed attractive options in the frontline setting as well.